Just hours after Uber CEO Travis Kalanick tweeted that tracking journalists is not part of the company's values and ideals, there's a new allegation. This time, BuzzFeed says one of its reporters was tracked by Uber New York GM Josh Moore by the ride-sharing app's Godview, quote-unquote, technology, which allows Uber employees to see the logs of customer activity. Uber sent Bloomberg this statement about Godview, saying, quote, Access to and use of data is permitted only for legitimate business purposes. Data security specialists monitor and audit that access on an ongoing basis. Violations of this policy do result in disciplinary action, including the possibility of termination and legal action. That's one of Uber's issues. Another is the lingering saga involving Uber executive Emil Michael, who said at a dinner party last week that Uber should dig up dirt on journalists unfriendly to the company. Some Uber investors, including Ashton Kutcher, the actor, appear to support that view, tweeting, what is so wrong about digging up dirt on a shady journalist? But at least publicly, CEO Travis Kalanick disagrees, ending his 14-tweet rant on the subject with the following. I believe folks who make mistakes can learn from them, myself included. That also goes for Emil. And last, I want to apologize to Sarah Lacey, at Sarah Kuda on Twitter. Sarah Lacey, editor-in-chief of Pando Daily, the focus of Emil Michael's proposed investigation, joins us now here in the studio. Corey Johnson, our editor-at-large, with us as well. So, Sarah, obviously, it's been an incredible 48 hours for you. I mean, first. more than that. I first heard about this from Ben Smith, and, you know, I feel like the story is really focused to me and Travis and, and Emil, but, like, let's not forget, this was said at a table full of journalists. Ariana Huffington, Michael Wolf, people from Business Insider, one thought this was wrong. One thought this was wrong and wrote a story under intense intimidation, and that was Ben Smith of BuzzFeed. And I mean, honestly, when, it, when he called me, I was on a business trip in London, and I, I stepped out to, to talk to him because I have enormous respect for him, and I couldn't imagine what was so important that he needed to talk to me immediately. And I was, I, I was terrified, and I you know, the plan as it was described was not just to dig up dirt. I mean, we're not talking about doing a Google search. We're talking about a million dollar budget, a four to six staff team to do opposition research on me. That's going through trash. That's following my kids. That's vans parked outside my house. And the idea was we're going to go at her through her family and we're going to destroy her through her family and we're going to do it until she backs down and no one will ever know that Uber did this. So and 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 one journalist thought this was wrong. So as soon as I heard this I was terrified but I also thought god Thank God you, he said it to a real journalist, because otherwise he'd be doing it and I'd have no idea. I want to know how you're feeling right now, because you've upped your own personal security. Security at Pando, tell us what you're doing. Uh, well, you know, obviously I don't want to deal, detail too much, because the point is for my family to be safe. Um, I have two young kids. Um, and look, I mean, Uber's view was, let's hit her at her one vulnerability, her, her kids. And, and they succeeded. I, I'm terrified. We have had to totally redo the security of my house. Um, I, you know, have, you know, personal security that with me and with my children you at all times. And, and here's the important thing is right now we're in this media firestorm about this, but Emil Michael has not been fired. And we see right after Travis apologizes publicly in Twitter what will go away, what there's no public record of. They have their celebrity investor come out and label me as shady. Oh, he backs away from it, but I'm now labeled as a shady journalist. He's now done a trial balloon of, is this really such a bad thing? They're starting to shift the narrative. I mean, you can see what Travis bragged about at the Code Conference in May. This is a political campaign. They've hired political operatives. Watch Scandal. So Watch House close. of Cards. That's what's happening. So when this yeah. dies down, there's no repercussions. The board's done nothing. Investors are supporting it, as so we've seen today. What should happen? It's going to... They're going to either go forward with their plan or do something worse. Because the story that I did that warranted a million dollar smear campaign, that warranted destroying my family, got nowhere near this amount of press. Got nowhere near this amount of people saying that they were, they were going to you know, take the app off their phone. Something bad is going to happen. Do you think that Emil should be fired? I mean, Ken Lara put up a post on Twitter saying that if it was a public company, he'd be fired. Exactly. No, I mean, I think the bare minimum we can all agree on is that Emil Michael should be fired. But 
this is a deep problem within the company. I mean, what as I've been living this horror for the last several days, what strikes me, and you know, one of the things that bothered me about Uber is whenever we would cover these stories about assault of, of female passengers, and we would call the company and ask them, they would say, well, she was dressed provocatively. Well, she was drinking. It was the classic blame and, and shame the woman psychology. Now, imagine a woman is attacked in an Uber in a way that could dent the company's valuation as much as my first article did. She doesn't have the resources of private security. She can't call you guys and come and get on TV and get her side of the story told. Um, I feel like this is not about me. This is about journalists. This is about women getting in their cars. This is about a company culture that thinks it can throw money to destroy people's lives and families in the name of a greater valuation. And it's about every single board member and private investor stepping back and being okay with it. People who've met my kids, people who've been at my house. In 15 years of covering the Valley, I've never seen anything like this. You have to wonder if the HP pretexting scandal came out now when journalists' phone records were tapped. Right. Would there be any outrage? It's a, it's Would Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher be fine with that as well? You know, digging up dirt on political candidates. This is a known tactic of political campaigns. Emile Michael has spent time in Washington. David Pluff obviously has a long history in Washington. What should someone like David Pluff be doing to manage this company's reputation? And how is it different when it's you and not an, an, a, an aspiring elected official? You know, I mean, I, look, I'm not in the political world for a reason. <laughs> like, I think it's incredibly scary. Um, but, I, I mean, what should he do? Well, it depends on what his goals are. I mean, if he really did want Uber to be recast as a friendly company, then, you know, perhaps they should start changing some of the executives. Because I don't think that you can just, you know, put put a new ribbon on that and, and make it look... Pig. Yeah, that's the phrase I was going to say, being from the South. But, um, but uh, you know, I think it depends on what his goals are. And I think... Unlike um, a politician, Uber's not running for office. This is a company that we are trusting with our lives. People, I know people who put their children in Ubers to drive them around. Women are getting in Ubers very late at night. And yes, sometimes they're dressed provocatively. And sometimes they've had something to drink. That's why they're calling an Uber. That doesn't mean they should be victimized. And if anyone raises question, their personal life gets destroyed. This do is you, horrifying. Do you think that this was said to a group of journalists so that all of the journalists would disseminate the intimidation? Or do you think this was just some guy shooting off his mouth? It was not a guy shooting off his mouth. I, I'm confident of that, having talked to people at the dinner. This, he, he articulated a plan. This was not spur of the moment conversation. It was a plan. So do you but think I think, more I, so you? I think it was I think it was primarily about me. I think I was the first target because I'm a woman and I'm high profile, and they knew they could go after my kids. But, but I do think I want to. It, it's one of two things. It's either they were putting the journalism world on notice, or and frankly, it would work with a lot of people. They've done other intimidation tactics, not this extreme, that have worked. Or it was, um, they don't think there's anything wrong with it. And so what are the plans that they wouldn't brag about at a dinner? That's why I have private security right now. I want to get back to this question of on versus off the record. I mean, if indeed both parties understood this was off the record, and, mm -hmm. and, and who knows what the understanding of either side really was. But if you hear something this extreme, do you break that journalistic code? Yes. And go take it on the record? Yes. I, I don't understand. I mean, look, like we, we, you and I Beth, definitely came up in like sort of the old world of journalism. I don't understand what's happened with online media today where journalists are confused on where their loyalties lie. And journalists think their loyalty lies to a, a rich guy that they're covering who's going to lie to them or say something horrific and illegal that damages someone's family's security off the record and that that trumps that responsibility to the reader. I want to be very clear to any source of mind listening to this. My responsibility is to my readers. It is to the users of these right. services. It is not to you. If you lie to me, if you confess to a crime to me off the record, it will become on the record. On that note, there are critics of you who have said your coverage of Uber has been potentially unfairly critical and more critical than Pando Daly's coverage of Lyft, for example. Mark Andreessen is an investor in Pando Daly. Andreessen Horowitz is an investor in Lyft. How do you respond to that? It's such a silly allegation. It's the one thing that everyone goes back to. Um, look, uh, Shervin Pishavar is a very close friend of Travis's, uh, was one of the first big backers of Pando. Uh, um, 
uh, Josh Koppelman, also an investor in Pando, uh, Matt Kohler from Benchmark. I mean, they're literally people on Uber's board that are investors in Pando. I mean, it's it's a it's a silly argument. And I would say about the you know, the off the record thing is that the 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 notion of being upset about on the record, off the record, the same the same people would be willing to threaten journalists, yeah. but are concerned with the sanctity of on the record and off the record. And, and just, threaten me in a way classical. where it's like you know. And, and look, there's people who say, "Will you go after them?" Yes, I go after them under my name. I don't get into their personal lives. I've never written anything about their personal lives. And I do it in my name. What they were going to do was dismantle me in a way Uber's fingerprints would never be on.